Okay, so, so we talked yesterday about some of the advantages and shortcomings of uh, deep neural networks for, for complex behavioral tasks. And in particular, Josh and others pointed out that, um, at least as, as currently designed, these networks don't find the sort of rich structured representations that, that people seem to use. So from that point of view, something like the representation on the right here, so a sort of symbolic rule-based formulation of a particular domain like a video game, um, might seem preferable. Um, but when we actually try to design or find a representation like this, we run up against the kind of uh, flip, flip side of the coin, which is that the discovering uh, uh, symbolic representations is very slow, whereas learning a deep neural network is, is, uh, is very fast. So in particular, the problem is that, that uh, with a network, you have a gradient which can guide your search for, um, for a good model, whereas in the symbolic case, you kind of have to stumble around until you hit something acceptable. Um, so the idea of this work is to uh, set up a, a logic program, which is the particular kind of symbolic representation shown here, in such a way that we can learn it with smooth, smooth optimization. So the first observation here is that uh, applying a logic program to some data actually kind of looks like the sort of, sort of thing you, you encounter in neural networks. So, you know, you start off here knowing some stuff or assuming some stuff, you apply some rules, you know more things, and you keep going, hopefully coming up with uh, something useful at the end. So if we choose, our, if we choose the right framing of our primitives, um, we, can, we can use standard techniques for learning this model, so in particular backpropagation or backpropagation through time. So the first approach we took to this was to uh, represent each logical rule as a high-dimensional tensor where we, uh, you know, we, we leave it zero everywhere except for, except for ones in places where the rule would apply. So if we wanted to represent a rule like this, we'd put ones in all of these situations where parenthood and grandparenthood um, lines up in the right way. Um, so this worked well uh, for for small examples, but when we tried to scale it up, we ran up against uh, 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 the issue that, that each, each grounding like this is, is very large, very high dimensional, and there are many of them. So this is a little bit too close to exhaustive enumeration uh, for, our, uh, uh, for our tastes. Nevertheless, it works well, so um, when we set up things uh, in, in this way, we can, we can uh, write down a whole logic program as a weighted sum of these matrices and learn it appropriately through um, uh, through gradient descent. So a better approach, untried yet, but formulated, uh, is to differentiate uh, e each, each rule itself. So the idea here is that we can write down a rule like this one, which says that um, uh, you know, so x, is, uh, x is the uncle of y, if, x, if for any z, x is the brother of z, z is the parent of y. So in constructing a rule, we have to first choose which three predicates are going to be involved. So we can, just, uh, we can just write these kind of binary choice vectors for that. And then we also have to represent the, uh, the variable pattern. So we don't care what these variables are called. All we care is the equality relations uh, that hold between them. So we get a graph um, like this. So here, you know, the, the first variable x is the same as the third variable, which is also x. So we put a 1 there and so on. So when we have a representation set up in this way, we can relax the binary assumption um, and replace all of these ones and zeros with, uh, with, real, with real values. And I I'm not going to show how, but you can show that um, uh, when, when, you've, when you've relaxed this way, each, uh, each, of these, uh, each of these parameters you can differentiate and learn um, as you'd like to.